So when I posted my remix of Porter Robinson's Cheerleader, most of the comments on it were really supportive and nice. But it's always the negative comments that you remember the most and leave the most impact. It's like that with a lot of things. I think it's something about human nature. And this one comment particularly stuck out to me. And it's something that people have said before when they completely don't understand what I do with remixes. So let's talk about it. Now I'm going to take the name out. Uh, I don't want to direct any kind of hate towards this person, but let's read this. The classic remix of putting drums and bass over the original song with little to no editing. So there was a little back and forth on this, but the general gist is that I'm essentially adding nothing and not being creative, not creating enough of a transformative work for this particular person. I offered to show them the project and how they are wrong. So let's take a look. But before we do that, apparently just asking people to subscribe is enough to get people to do it. So just like do it. The button's down there. Just click it, touch it. What are you waiting for? All right, so let's take a look at this track. So as you can see, this is a lot more of a complex project than just the original audio, some drum, some drums and some, wait, wait. what's going on here? Uh, let's just listen to this. <laughs> All right, uh, this is what it would look like and what it would sound like if what they said was actually true. Uh, this is what the project looks like. Now, I realize I should probably just let comments like this go, delete them, block them, whatever, but it really kind of irks me when someone Dunning-Kruger's their whole perception of your creative work and minimizes it into something that in actual fact it blatantly isn't. This will be the only time I go over this for someone who says something like this. Next time it happens, I can just point them here. Uh, in fact, it actually happened again while I was writing this script. A, a lot of people will look at something that they don't understand and make a patently wrong and broad generalization of it to minimize the skill involved in something. Like, have you ever heard uh, people mischaracterize death metal and say that like the band is just chaotically thrashing at their instruments and screaming nonsense into the microphone? Uh, it's either intentionally misleading in order to diminish someone's work, or they truly don't know and don't want to see the merit. So let's pick apart a statement. Uh, let's start with, the original song with little to no editing, because really everything else doesn't matter if this statement is false. Um, one of the first things I like to do with remixes is split the, the tracks into stems with AI. Uh, for the most part, I've discarded the drums and I would normally discard the bass too. Sometimes I don't even use the instrumental part, but I, I really like the guitar lines in this track and I wanted them kind of represented in the verses. The bass itself isn't really necessary, but there are some kind of like textural things. Uh, that I really liked and wanted to include the let's let's actually take a look at it So the bass itself is like heavily EQ'd um, got some distortion on it and then uh, Shape a box and some reverb the the incoming audio is already pretty well sidechained to a 4x4 beat But the distortion ruins it so something like shape a box or LFO tool or even 3d limiter with a sidechain trigger can kind of get that back the the vocals themselves i usually have this like preset vocal chain that i just kind of mess with um kind of does everything i need for vocals it, it really just has like a little bit of reverb um some some compression to sort of bring it back up and then this side chain compression and then some do i even do anything with the eq uh, i i don't think i touched this from like the last project that i made <laughs> so it's just like this really like high-end roll off and like this random ass tiny notch uh, yeah, I don't even think that's really necessary. And the intro, the instrumental part of it, um, doesn't really have anything, but some, I think some extra side chain, uh, to really duck it on the kick. I also have this other vocal line down here. Um, that's in the intro and the outro that just has like shape a box on it. Um, just for some like ambient kind of stuff. Let's, let's play and listen to that. Yeah, just this like weird, like when you actually have everything all, all together, it's really kind of in the background. Ooh, my computer's struggling a little bit on this. Maybe I need to close some shit. 
That uh, plays a little bit better. <laughs> I, I don't know about y'all, but I wouldn't call that little to no editing. Um, yeah. Let's see if I can get a little chop of that. Um, that bass I was talking about, the bass texture. Uh, I think we just need to hear this. I think it's a good one, like right here. <laughs> oh yeah, you hear that? Oh, let's hear that sounds in the actual final mix. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay, so uh, the next part, drum and bass, is according to them, that's the only thing I actually added. Um, this is a lead. These are some pads. I'm gonna include some other stuff with this one, but uh, thems are some plucks. And there's like a whole bunch of like effects and shit like Yeah, I, and I know it's not a lot. It's not my most complex remix. You should check out my Get Your Wish remix. There's a lot more in that one, but it means you're technically wrong, which is the best kind of wrong. And I, I think I know where your mind is going when you see shit like this, like these, uh, let's see, like specifically this, like these fills. Cashmere sample pack or like, uh, you know, an amen break. Or these these random bar end fills like Like oh my god, he's using pre-made garbage. Personally, I think that criticism is really pedantic and inconsequential. Like you can take that argument to the extreme and be like I, I don't know, like Lamb of God's drummer is super uncreative because he doesn't go and kill and skin a cow to make a snare drum. He's using a pre-built snare drum like a cheetah or some stupid, <laughs> some stupid shit like that. I get that there's a spectrum of what an individual would find creative or uncreative, but man, what makes your opinion special? You're the only one talking. Do you think, do you think everyone actually believes that there's no creative merit in a remix like this? I mean, I understand remixes are inherently less creative than an original track, but that's that's what remixes are. Uh, this this video was really not necessary. I didn't need to spend my time making this. I get that. But it might be useful for some people to be reminded that this quote exists for a reason. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything. But I guess that doesn't help if your actual understanding and perception is actually wrong from the get go. If you want to give constructive criticism, and I mean constructive criticism, then the compliment sandwich strategy is a great technique to use if you don't want to sound like an asshole. I find it crazy how I've been able to let my experience of making and releasing this remix to be tainted by one person's negativity, when in actual fact it is just that, one person. Out of what I'm, what I'm super happy and stoked to see, quite a few people who had seen this and been thoughtful enough to leave a nice comment. Something that shows me that my work is appreciated. Thank you to those people. I'm going to keep making remixes the way that I make them because it's clear that people enjoy them. I'm not going to change for the few people who can't see the value in what I do, whether you think it's creative enough for you or not. People find value in it. People enjoy it. It brings happiness into people's lives. That's enough for me. Yeah.